Kahala Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah Barakatha Barakatha Double honors unto the elders and to the apostles that came before me that's been pushing this word and this truth for the past fifty years. And double honors to all the all the all the aquas or the elect listening and learning. Now today I want to go. I want to go over a subject that I may have discussed with a few of y'all, but I've never really clearly, clearly explained it. And this is this is this hell doctrine. This is this hell deception. When I tell you, hell is a condition of a people. It's not a place. What I mean by that, I'm gonna go a little further deeper into that. And this doctrine starts. It starts from slavery time when a slave master. Back in slavery time, a slave master would have up to 150 slaves. And that's a lot of slaves for one person to watch over. So what could this slave master do in order to control these 150 slaves? Well, he had to create a hell doctrine. He had to kill the hell doctrine. Just like it says in Ephesians 6 and 5, he created a doctrine that the slave had to, had to obey thy master or they would go to hell. When just in fact, that's not true. You can look that up in the Bible. That's not true. Slavery is only supposed to be for seven years, then it's supposed to be forgiven. We've been in internal bondage for over 400 years. It's not justice. It's not right. Or they'll use the Gospel of Luke, which is in Luke 16, 19 through 31, which is the parable of the, the rich man, the poor man, saying that it is easier for a poor man to make it into the kingdom of heaven than it is for a rich man. And again, you cannot make a doctrine off of one or two verses. That's not how we're taught to learn. Precept after precept, line upon line. As a matter of fact, let me just get that. Isaiah 28 and 13. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they may go and fall back backward, and they be broken and snared and taken. Psalms 119, 104 through 106. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. Now they use this hell doctrine from those two passages to control our ancestors, to put them in a bind. When, in fact, if we really look at the Bible, which we're going to go through it, hell is a condition, a state of being. It's not a physical place. Our ancestors went through hell and slavery. Our ancestors went through hell in Egypt. Hell is just a condition of a people. Anybody can go through hell. All right, we're going to look up the definition of hell. And you, and right now, y'all, I'm looking at this in Lexington Strong, H7585, Shield. Let's go. Let's get a uh, let's get a pure understanding of what sh what shield is. All right, shield, underworld, underworld, grave, pit, the underworld, shield, place of no return, without praise of God. The wicked are sent there for punishment. Oh, this is what I want right here. The righteous are not abandoned to it. I'm gonna say it again. The righteous are not abandoned to it. So what does that mean? Meaning that the elect are not abandoned to hell. That mean they're that mean they're not just because we're the elect. That mean we don't go through hell or we don't face trial and tribulations. That's exactly what that means. The righteous are not abandoned to it. A place of exile, of extreme degradation in sin. I want y'all to to stick on that last meaning of extreme degradation in sin. Degradation and sins mean you're in perpetual sin. You're in perpetual sin, then basically you are in hell. But it's not physical. It's not a physical burning hell. But we're gonna get into that some more. All right. Jonah two and two. And I cried. And, he, and I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell. I cried. And thou heard as my voice. Whoa, 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 what did he say? Jonah said he was in the belly of hell. 
He couldn't have been. He was in a well. So, again, that's alluding to hell is just a condition, trials and tribulations. Let's continue. Jonah 2 and 3. For thou hast cast me into a deep in the midst of the seas, and the flood compassed me about, and all thy billows, thy waves pass over me. Jonah 2 and 4. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I look again towards the holy temple. So basically what he's saying is hell is a place where you're casted out, where, where you're not where you're not in favor with God. Are we not in favor in, in favor of God right now? It hasn't he turned a blind eye to all the wickedness that happened to us over the years? Isn't this a state of hell? So I ask you this question. So if there's no such thing as hell, so where does our souls go? What does the Bible say? What does Yahweh say? Because that's what really matters. It don't matter what these step and fetch it coon pastors say. It matters what the Bible says. So we're going to go. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Listen. Then the dust returned to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto Yahweh who gave it. No, you're going to go to hell. I'm going to say it again. And the spirit shall return unto Yahweh who gave it. So who gave the spirit? Yahweh. Dust to dust and the spirit goes to Yahweh. What people don't understand is our souls are, are fireballs or energy and Yahweh created this. So he requires this same energy back. And one thing people have to understand is these these scriptures cannot be broken. They cannot be they cannot be contested. Precept after precept, we cannot we cannot break that. He classed he classed these three and fifteen. That which has been is now, and that which is to be has already been, and God requires which is past. So what does Yahweh require? We just we just read that earlier. He requires our spirits. And they go and they go up to Yahweh who gave it. So that right there is telling you where it goes. But we're gonna get deeper into this. We're gonna get deeper. We're gonna get deeper. That's telling you about regeneration right there, right in your face. So we're gonna go down to 18. And I said in my I said in my heart concerning the state of sons of men that God might manifest them and that they might see that. They themselves are beast. So the Bible here is comparing son of men to beast, which it does many times in the Bible. It called it called the uh, nations beast of the field. That's all that is alluding to. And especially you can be a beast when you're particularly living not by the law and perpetual sin. That's how God looks at you as a beast. Verse 19. For which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beast. Even one thing befalleth them as one doeth, so doeth the other. Yea, they all have all one breath. All have one breath. So that a man has no preeminence above a beast. For all is vanity. 20. All go into one place. I'm going to read that again. 20. All go unto one place. All are of the dust. All goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast goeth downward. Question mark. So right there in 21, he already told you in verses 19 and 20 that the soul of beast and the soul of men, they both are created by Yahweh. So they are both required to go back to Yahweh who gave it. We just read that earlier. We just read it earlier. Precept upon precept, line upon line. And then in verse 21, what that speak, that's a rhetorical question. Because he already told you what was gonna what, what happens to our spirits once 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 we die. It goes back upward. What is up? Who is upward? What is upward? Yahweh. It goes back to Yahweh who gave it. Everything good or evil is created by Yahweh. So just like just like just like the elect, when they die, their souls went up to Yahweh. So does Esau. His soul goes up to Yahweh who made it. Because he creates everything. Good and bad. Animal, insect. All is required by Yahweh. Because he is the one who made it. So let's get into this deeper. I'm not done yet. We're going to 